Hello everyone and welcome to Heart and Hand Rangers podcast. My name is David Edgar, I am your host and my goodness, does the next 45 minutes promise to be fun? Probably not. Joining me to discuss Rangers' pathetic performance in Dingwall is first of all David Marshall. Uh, how you doing mate? I've, I've not done uh, one of these for a, a, for a while so it's nice to be brought on for a happy cheery one. Yeah, yeah, jinxy bastard. Yeah, my fault, obviously. <laughs> no, we'll get to whose fault it was in a second. <laughs> yes. And uh, it wouldn't be a, a painful defeat without the, <laughs> the lovely calming tones of Martin Ramsey. Martin, I don't know how this always works out, but it does seem to always work out. Yeah, you've you've reached for the hammer, you've smashed the glass. Um, if you're looking for me, I'm afraid, to solve some uh, red-hot rage, then uh, I think you're, you're onto plums, I'm afraid. No, because I think sometimes it's about context. I think sometimes in games you need to look at the, the wider picture, all of those things. And I think we try very hard on here to be fair and to do that and to come at it from all quarters. But I watched the game yesterday. And of course, what unfolded, unfolded. And you're just getting progressively angrier and angrier throughout the game. So what I like to do is go sleep on it, come out and watch the game the next day. And you do often see things that maybe were a little harsh during the 90 minutes or whatever. That was not the case today when I watched this game back. Everything I think anyone thought about Rangers' performance yesterday was was basically just confirmed um, in my in my thoughts. I'll hold my hands up, Martin, and say that I am a penitent member of the it'll be different this time, loyal. And <laughs> I did expect that they would go on. And, and you know, you might drop points here or there. I, I do understand that. It's the manner of this, because that wasn't unfortunate. It wasn't refereeing decisions, terrible pitch, a day where the goalkeeper is a game of his life and you just can't put the ball in the net and then they nick one. I believe that that's the highest XG for those of you who like that sort of thing that Rangers have faced this season. To put it into context, that means that not only did Ross County score, the chances they made were were straightforward chances and that they should have scored more on the day. It it was a, a pathetic, inept, spineless performance from Rangers where on top of all the, the individual mistakes and individual errors, there was no structure whatsoever to that Rangers team. County broke on us into double figures. And when they did, they would run unchallenged with the ball right into our half. And it happened on multiple occasions. The The defence was all over the place. There was no shape whatsoever to it. There, there was no playing in tandem. There was nothing coordinated or cohesive about it. The midfield were non-existent and just weren't a factor. Whenever County won the ball, they were clear to, to then run in and quite often got us in a, a 3v2 or a 5v4. And... The front players, again, utterly ineffectual. It wasn't joined up. It wasn't in any way commendable. And frankly, it was bordering on the, the ludicrous. I think you've, you've pretty much wrapped it up. I think we can all go up the road. Um, interesting to come on and said, you know, that this is the worst he's seen. And I, I kind of understand where he's coming from because it was. But the component parts we've seen before. I just don't think we've managed to put it together in such a cartoon cavalcade of um, defending and just complete inertia um, up front. Um, everything kind of combined, and again, the opponent and you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it wasn't as if County grew into the game, David. No. Nope. I mean, it was they, they, could, have they scored, should have could have scored. Yep. Yeah. Should have. And, it's a bad and, and, I know. And I know there's this kind of understand why there's this running joke about. It's a huge three points today, and you know, three points down the road. Any any way we do, it's fine. Well, it did probably wasn't fine. I, I needed to see something yesterday that that in the performance, not just the result, that gave us something to hope um, or something to pin hopes on for the remaining six games, which they all have their own individual challenges, because this has been in the post. And I needed to see a clean sheet and I needed to see just no trouble and some chemistry and cohesion again, the way we were in, you know, what, February or whatever. Um, and it was yet another example of a team that's just fading away from that that high that they had managed to put together. Um, and it was as if those two games back to back at uh, Hearts at Home and, and, and Rugby Park um the aesthetic of the Hearts game, we were superb. We genuinely were. 
And then obviously we're in a bit of trouble at Robbie Park on the pitch and all the narrative around that and we dug it out and we showed something and, you know, Lawrence's goal was absolutely superb, blah, blah, blah. You're driving up the, the road thinking we're, we're, we're going to do it. We're, we're combining both facets of the game here. And I'm not sure we've kicked the ball since, really. And the, you t- the, the amount of times Ross County players just, just ran with so much freedom. Um, not been challenged, not been pressed. Um, but that, that's nothing new. And for me, anyway, it, I, I was really worried a couple of weeks ago at Home Hibs. Half time, or 2 1 up. Um, and obviously in control of the game. I could not believe how easy it was for them just to run through that midfield. And you know there's a defensive disaster class coming at any point. And it was Stuart McCall actually taking my, my cousin's ticket that day with something beside each other said, I don't think we're going to do this. Not the, the, the 90 minutes, but just, just over the piece. How, how can you be set up like that and expect to, to, to win a championship? Because we know there's no routine games anymore the way that there is in November or January or whenever. Everything is just an unbelievable amount of tension around it. And we're just making individual mistakes. And the team without the ball, it just, just looks a disgrace, which is such a departure from what Clement did when he came in. I think his first 12 league games, we conceded six goals. Mm. And the next 12, which leads up to yesterday, 12. Um, this team do respond well to new messages, but eventually, because they're not a good group of players, I'm sorry to break that to anyone, that hasn't changed overnight and they will regress to their level. Um, and it's, it's the same music every season. On that point, Dave, there's regressing to your level, but this was beyond that. This, is, as Martin yes. said, was yeah. was mm. everything all at once. And I don't think anyone has been kidded that this is a great group of players. I don't think anyone has been saying that. And, you know, you get a lot of straw man arguments and people say, oh, well, you know, everyone who was raving about these players, yeah, when they're winning, you give them a bit of praise. But it I mm. still doesn't change your opinion on them as, as being limited footballers. We're not daft. There's a lot of football in the world and you can see what a top level player looks like and, and what ours are. But yesterday, Martin mentioned something there. For me, the word I kept coming back to in my notes when I was watching it back the second time about Kammer was shape. There was no shape, none. Mm off the ball work as martin mentioned really incompetent just not being done and that's why when when county broke it was such complete panic in the rangers defense before we get and we will get to analysis of individual players and mentality and things like that let's just stick on that from a a technical point of view how can it go from a few months ago where everyone knew their job and was doing it and it was quite clear that, that you know you would still get the individual errors because of the ability levels Martin has mentioned and we would still concede a goal here or there you think we should have done better at that happens but that yesterday was not that at all there was no structure whatsoever to that football team it was 11 players out there with a sort of vague idea of of trying to push forward and get the ball in the net but when we didn't have the ball which was quite often because our, our passing was woeful of course on top of everything else then we were offering such an invited target to a team that, let's not kid ourselves, are 11th in the table. And yet they attacked us with so much space to go into, so much time, so many options on the pass because people weren't being picked up. That's a structural failure. Do you know what? I've been sitting here uh, for nearly 10 minutes and I've got a sore neck now because I've just found myself nodding along with everything you and Martin have been saying. Um you know, the point Martin's saying at this point in the season that there's no routine games, I think there was anything that came close to routine, it was yesterday, as you say, playing the team in 11th. I wasn't, you know, I, I was uh, a little bit more lenient going into the game yesterday. I wasn't expecting anything spectacular. I wasn't expecting us to win 5 or 6 nil. But all I wanted was a game where it was, you know, straightforward and no nonsense. And that goes out the window within a minute because, as I said, Ross County should score. And it's hard to say that, just take the defence for one, that the defence uh, lost their head in this game because their head was was never in the game. And you look further forward, you know, Lundstrom and uh, uh, Dill in the middle of the midfield may as well have not been there. I think 
the, the two of them make it off a bit lightly in the wider criticism from the support because of the calamity it was to the fence and the chances missed up the other end. But the midfield was absolutely atrocious yesterday. I couldn't tell you um, what the job or the role of the other two in the middle was. Uh, yesterday, I think Lundstrom just started to revert back to type, dropping deeper and deeper, trying to take the ball off uh, Suter, who's, you know, in many ways is much better passing and bringing the ball forward than, than Lundstrom is. It was just utterly baffling. To, to watch and no point during that game, uh, even when we won, went one lot, David, did I feel like we looked comfortable, we were going to win the game, we were all talking yesterday and we all agreed that we need to see half time in this thing and fi- you know, at that point I thought thankfully we did and then it takes them um, 90 minutes to come out and score in the uh, 90 seconds sorry, to come out in the second half and score and uh, I don't know, if you thought after Ross County equalised that we were going to get anything from that, then you've got much more hope in this team than I do because we just did not look at the races at any point over the 90 minutes yesterday. How much is that in the manager then, Dave? Because structure is something that he brought yep. in. We saw at the start of the season Rangers playing without one, or certainly if there was one, the players didn't understand it. And that was very, very visible to, to us watching. But it has been there. Um, you can talk about whether or not we've got a defined style. That's a slightly different thing. We have at least all known that there is a shape and a structure and what they're supposed to do when they don't have the ball. Was it just a case of collectively nobody bothered their arse yesterday? Because as Martin said, there's been recent examples of it, not for a whole game, thankfully, but parts of games where they they just seem to forget this and all run a bit as, as I say, 11 individuals. I think it's both. Um, I, I was agreeing with Martin. Um, when Clement comes in, the first thing he does, you know, is he makes us more structurally sound and we don't lose as many goals. And it was a bit of a, you know, abnormally because none of us at that point, even then, would have said we had a good defence, but we weren't conceding a lot of goals. So, you know, <laughs> the stats and what you see with your eyes weren't really lining up. But here we are now and we are conceding nonsense goals and the same goals time and time again and we're losing more of them more of them now I, I think that has to go in the manager you look back to the, the Motherwell game as well where we concede two goals which are pretty much carbon copies of each other after we get that equaliser against Motherwell then it kind of becomes you know under 11 stuff and we're just trying to chase after the ball try to get the winner and we're forgetting that there's another part of the game to be played I think uh, I'll that does have to go back in the manager. Um, I'm at pains to blame him too much because I'm absolutely done with his collection of players and I think we're only in this position because of the manager. Same point, it doesn't mean he's blame-free, but I don't think we're going to get the best from the manager either until we get a change in this squad. Yeah, I mean, it's been done, not quite done to death, but it's been a familiar theme at any time you've looked at Rangers Twitter or any message boards. I think the majority of Rangers fans, for good reason, like the manager, are, are very much behind the manager, but can see that the ones before him, um, some decent managers, the last one was a charlatan to be fair, but yep. they were undone by players. Players get managers to sack. Mm-hmm. So this ruthlessness in you know, really going after some sacred cows to send a message, um, we've put it off and put it off and put it off for a variety of reasons. I think everyone is, is pretty much in agreement that that really can't continue this summer. Um, Regardless what happens, if there's another miracle between now and the end of May, like that's it doesn't, it doesn't matter. what is done. Yeah. It doesn't matter because that miracle, uh, if, if we end up having a very enjoyable May, it's probably going to have happen, in, at least in part, because they've had another bout of infighting, mm-hmm. um, disaster and confidence whatever it may be, whatever that was, you know, over, um, you know, earlier in the season. Because um, it sure as hell isn't he was going to be knocking three, four, five every week from now on and romping home at the title. So, um, and we will enjoy our summer, but it, you're absolutely right that that should not um, change or, or, or mask what we know to be true just now. Where I think, Clement, if I look at yesterday and I look at Motherwell, David, um, the, the, the home game that, was the first defeat in a while and really put to the window that um that that that, that strong um resurgence that we had. He made big changes in midfield. Kind of out of nowhere. Raskin came in to start from fucking nowhere. Dowell 
starts from left field yesterday. Yeah. And he will say, and you can understand why a football manager would say this, I, I need, we're going to have to use a squad. This is getting you know, busy and it's going to get tight. And I need players who have got minutes in the legs. I looked at Motherwell at Ibrooks and I looked at the team playing second bottom um, on a decent pitch um, as games where I should be able to say, come in and do a job, get yourself up to speed. And well, that's what's happened. So I, I can understand why he would feel that way as a manager and would take that gamble. Um, but it's it's a a chilling reminder of the, the absolute lack of quality other you know outside of his first eleven, and even then, can we say that the first eleven are really um, pulling up trees anymore? Um, so yes, and should he have changed things at half time? Yes. Absolutely, he will have said, "Look, he gave him a dressing down, and that that's a worry." If he came in and said, "Look, you're lucky to be one up, get the finger out," and within how many minutes are we behind? Uh, five. Yeah. So that that's. Again, we can go round the houses on this and look, if you didn't interrupt me or cut me off, I, I could easily do an hour on where I think we are and where, where things have gone wrong. Um, but it will still come back down to the fact that the, the, the players are not good. And as much as, as you can infuse confidence, and he did, and solidity, which he did. Mm. We spoke about it in, in I think, uh, at Ibrox a couple of times, they were doing on, on kind of pre-match or post-match or whatever it was, just saying, well, confidence comes, that's fine, but it can disappear just as quickly as it arrives. And um, that's something we need to we need to guard against. And it, it has, they've looked, they've looked leggy, um, but they, when that goes, well, the, the confidence starts to go. And again, the fabled leadership group and how they're not actually particularly great leaders when the wind changes um, is, it, these are tried and tested, kind of tropes um, you've got a few individual things there if he'd been able to use Sterling at all times in the centre midfield would we have looked so porous recently probably not but how many of us are calling for Sterling and he's not dropping lunch from so just let's deal with that reality how many of us are calling for that at home to Motherwell or away to Ross County probably not many because we've, 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 we've talked about the handbrake going off well that's kind of what happens when the handbrake does go off we look so so open Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got to add in Goldson's individual nightmare which continues and continues and I'm, I'm happy to hear other theories on this but um, he got a bloody nose at Pataudry and I think him and Balligan responded very well at Hamden but Mioski I thought battered them at Ibrox early in the season and he has not kicked the ball since I think we played Ross County Ibrox seven days later and he looked terrified Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, oh no, <laughs> um, because he, yeah, you just can't have key players just losing confidence. And I, th I think he, that's a clear one. I think that's inarguable. Um, but then if he's losing confidence, he's not even pointing at other people when he makes mistakes. Now, no, that's, that's, that's the thing. Oh, yeah. um, that, was so, what, that was what worried me a yeah. few weeks ago when I thought he's, he's not even blaming other people for his yeah. mistake now. So he when you see, him. That's a first. You see big players, I mean, he doesn't miss, right? He's he's pretty much a never present in the time he's been here. When they start shaking and the captain gets a roast in defensively last week and, you know, a few other occasions, um, then your new players, well, who, who do they look to? Yeah. To keep themselves confident? Because that's, that's how it works, right? You bring new players in, you bring them into a culture that's hopefully good and strong and they fit into that and they, they grow from that or you buy three or four players that change the culture and I don't think we've ever done that it's been a common kind of complaint to me I know it costs money and I know that's that's probably going to be very difficult but that's the thing a lot of good humble young players well, who, who, who are they who are they learning from who are they taking inspiration from on, on the pitch again when the wind turns I, 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 it, yeah, it's uh, it's the look at Butland, who has been sensational this season, channeling Alan McGregor at Dingwall two years ago. Wouldn't come off his line in the first half. And now, if those are players who you would think were riding high because of what they've done, and they are starting to not look as assured, it's a hell of a different from for anybody on the touchline to do much about. You need quality players I think that in terms of leadership um, we'll, we'll come to that just now Dave 
one of the things about this Rangers team that is a common thing is that they're at, their own pitch leadership is very lacking. And that, what I mean is, if Rangers are having a bad half, it will continue the whole half. Mm. It will need a manager to reset it. That's not new under Clement. That's been happening certainly since Gerard. That it takes a collective sit down and, and input from the manager. Nobody on the park can say. And in terms yesterday of game management, when you concede three goals in 20 minutes, your head's gone. That's why, especially when there are three such terrible goals to concede, it's because collectively the team's head had gone at that stage and it was then too late to to do anything about because it takes you another 10 minutes to get over it and then, you know, the game was away by then. He's right. You know, we can talk about and people will talk about Tavernier and Goldson and Lundstrom, but the evidence is such that they can do it in certain situations. That's the thing. I'm beginning to think that this this phrase leadership isn't all encompassing. I'm beginning to think that, you know, there are times where people feel comfortable enough to do it because we've seen them do it in Europe, for example. But we do know that when we get to this stage of a season, the absolute clutch, as Americans call it, when we get to this stage of the season, this is what happens. Now we can debate the reasons why. And you know, as I say, people can point out other situations where it hasn't, and that's fine. But I'm beginning to think it doesn't really matter if you can hold it together at the biggest European challenge. It doesn't really matter if you're great in cup football. In terms of league titles, what we have watched from Rangers collectively over the past six years, with the exception of one year when they ran away with it, yeah. is that when it gets to really pressurised situation, they falter. It's time and time again, you know, it's, all those other things are great, but you're going to be judged as a Rangers player uh, and what you do in the league and how many league titles you win. That's just the nature of it. And it's funny, you know, you mentioned since Gerard came, we kind of treat Gerard coming in as year zero because everything before that was just a nonsense. Um, and since then, all bar one season, we've seen this collapse happen time and time again. And it's we as fans were just waiting for it to, to peter out. It's why last season, when we went on a decent run towards the end of the year, when there was nothing to play for, I didn't get too high about it. You know, the 3-0 win over Celtic um, was, was nice, but it meant absolutely nothing. I, I, I couldn't even see it as an indicator for the season coming ahead because I'm, I'm of the point of view, until this team is able to show that they can do it, then I don't believe they do. It's even... You know, last week after the firm game uh, amongst ourselves, there was a wee bit of um, spirited debate, shall we say, about going to Parkhead. And, you know, I, I don't believe that we can get a result there until they can show me that they that they can do it. I, I've been coming out of January. I've always said I think, we're sh- I think we're short of a league title. I honestly, I was hoping and even in my head still planning the ideal situation of a title party, but I expected us to fall short at some point. Didn't think it'd be yesterday in, in that manner, but I didn't think this team had enough. And the fact that they faltered uh, what should have been one of the more easier hurdles, I mean, I think that speaks volumes about them. Martin, in terms of, as you know, we've, we've spoken about senior players, etc. Um, does a team ever, can a team drop the captain and vice captain after a showing like that? His Tavernier, the debate has always been, yeah, he makes mistakes at the back, but he does enough going forward. Is that currently the case? For me, of the the two players, it would I would probably leave Tavernier in the side at the moment because I still think he's an important uh, attacking facet for us, even when he's not playing well. But I would be taking Goldson out because he's a hindrance right now. Agreed. Uh, I would agree. Uh, I think that, listen, the t- Tavernier has been... Uh, a fabulous servant to the club and his numbers are wild and uh, I think I, I read on, someone made a good point on, on, on Twitter recently which I would agree with that it's, you know, how can you replace him? Well, we're not going to replace a right back like that. We just aren't. We need to find the output somewhere else, that's without question uh, and maybe a, a right back that, that maybe does something something else because the, he's, the fact he's that we're going to, relying on the like right back for exactly. that session itself hey, hey, yeah. that this is when you have when a poor team has a talisman it can almost be a hindrance because they just he'll do it and, and our, our, he, our lads do defer to that to it will do something absolutely 
and sometimes that just needs to be kind of removed. I, I think we need a ruthless summer. Um, mm-hmm. Agreed. And that, but that's that's the summer, right? So let's. I know we're very used to talking about the summer around March, April time, but that 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 that'll just have to wait. Right now, you're you're not dropping him um, because again, he is still doing too much in an offensive sense. Um, but yet, Golson's a liability at this minute in time. Now, we are not exactly swimming with great central defensive options, which again is a problem. I I can't remember if I was on at the start of last season. I think I was. Could not believe that we felt that bringing back Balligan was enough yeah. at the heart of the defence. I, I thought it was really weak. Um, it, it really frightened the life out of me. And I know we've, you know, we've just about every other position to fill when we're, well, yep, that, that, that show's coming back to a theatre near you soon, folks, in the summer, because we're going to be pretty much back there. But I, I just I couldn't fathom that we looked at it and said, yeah, that, that, that'll be. That'd be good. Um, it, yeah. So we, we don't have those options. But I, I, I let's, let's say this on Wednesday night. If 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 Sutton and Balligan run out, I wouldn't be worried, or any more worried than, than worried, a company. Yeah. A company. Yeah. Um, that that's just it's just kind of where we are. Um, and yeah, the, the, that that is a problem because he he looks. Like he's shaking, David. I mean, he it, looks it, shot. It, no, I agree. For, for, for weeks now, though, and it, it sometimes spreads. you take, sometimes you I, well, exactly. It spreads throughout the team. Sometimes you need to take a player out for their own good, absolutely. Because of course, you know, if you say to the player, you know, do, do you want to play on Wednesday? He's going to say yes. Of course, he is. Right? Something wrong with him if he didn't. So that's not, uh, you know, are you feeling? Oh no, I'm sure I'll be good. But you know that he's lying in bed, going, "Christ, I made mistakes, and what if I do it again?" You yeah. know, it's human nature. You take them out the firing line. You say, right. You know, you you can even say to a player, Alex Ferguson summed it up rather famously. He'd, um, he's not a better player than you, but right now he believes he is. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, that's absolutely. important for me. And and it's a belief thing. The Tav thing, I, I I genuinely don't think we would be having anywhere near the conversation if he wasn't captain. And you know, Gerard obviously made that that call, and there's there's, there's absolutely. A, 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 uh, folders of evidence that would suggest that that, that has um, been beneficial to the team. I think he could still do what he's done for the team, um, perhaps even more, not not weighed down by by that responsibility. I still think, and I know I'm, I'm a, a broken record on this, I just don't think we've, we've ever really brought in that kind of handful of players that you thought genuinely changed the picture. Mm-hmm. And we clearly would, we would just clearly influence not we'll, we'll see who this guy is and maybe he'll come on to a game because Christ knows we've, we've, we've seen plenty of those but all right I know who this guy is <laughs> and he will change those around us but I am also aware that it's not 1986. Dave Lundstrom's contract been a source of a lot of debate and you know I, I was kind of special subject for Dave yeah. Yeah. yeah I was kind of going backwards and forwards and you know, I wasn't really sure. The thing for me was was about finances because my take on it was while he's he's done well at parts of the season, um, can we spend the money better elsewhere on somebody younger with a resale value, all that? And by money, I mean wages just before anyone says that, you know, we, we didn't have to spend a fee. A lot yeah. of people seem to think that our players play for free. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the, the definitive thing that went was after Benfica and after Celtic, where I thought he's fine in most domestic games. Not yesterday, but as I say, everyone was. But he's fine in most domestic games. But the big games, he doesn't have the legs anymore, or whether he ever did. But he certainly doesn't right now have the legs. So that's not what we need. Now that that's kind of my position on it. But other people who say, well, you know that we we only went with one midfielder yesterday. He had so much to do. Am I being harsh or what's your take? Uh, you're setting me up here a wee bit. Um, <laughs> no, I would. I wouldn't give him a, a new contract. Um, he's been here for nearly three years, and we've got two purple patches out him. I don't think that merits a new contract. I think if you're looking at the lack of uh, quality 
throughout the throughout the squad. And as Martin says, as mentioned earlier, you know, even the, the lack of quality in the first eleven, I think Lundstrom's one of these guys that sums that up. He's just not good enough for what we need him to be. He's uh, not going to be that guy that's going to go on a run over the course of a season and not just three weeks here, two weeks here, an actual performance throughout the entire season where we can turn to him and go, he's our main guy. When he's in there, we know he'll make make the difference. He is not that player. We There are many areas of the park that we need to look to upgrade uh, in the summer and that's one of them for me. I think it feels a absolute mess at the moment and yeah, it needs work and I, I think if we're going to give guys like Lundstrom a new contract, then we're just going to be here in six months again having the same conversations that we've had for three years now. Yeah, I, the big thing that, that keeps coming back about Lundstrom is that he drops deep. He doesn't track runners deep, but he, he drops deep to pick the ball um, and therefore leaves these huge gaps. That's why we, we have this massive space. Um, I think he does that because he doesn't trust the two behind them to get things going. I think that's inflating his own ability to, to do that. Um, it's kind of like Barry and Steven Gerrard, maybe, as, as players. Now, a lot more talent than John Lundstrom has, but it's the same thing. I, I, having to do every job because they didn't really trust the players around to do that. I now, think he needs to worry about himself first and foremost before he worries about I, 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 I don't. I don't completely disagree, Dave, but that's, I think, where he gets... It's just a huge problem, but it's a huge problem in those players as well, even though they were brilliant. You can't have players doing that. Mm-hmm. You can't have players just popping up everywhere, trying to do everything, because it makes you a tactical mess. Mm. And I think that's part of the problem. It comes from a good place. There are a few few Rangers players that, I, I'll be quite honest, I really dislike because I just don't think they try, really. And I think they're, they're I don't think Lundstrom's a coward. Um, I think he always wants to be involved. I don't think he, his legs do what he, they maybe used to do. I certainly don't think he has the ability that he, he maybe thinks he has. Um, but I think it's misguided. And if he was ever able to be tactically disciplined or surrounded by teammates that he did trust, oh, they can do that job, I don't have to come back because um, the, the, the centre-backs can deal with that. Um, or I'm, I've got a midfield partner that I... I've got the same midfield partner three games in a row mm. um, that, that I, I, I know exactly what they do and I don't have to try and double up. I can just do my job. I think those purple patches... Dave, I've kind of come when he, he maybe has had a bit of consistency around him and he hasn't felt the need to be all things to all men. Um, but again, we're not going <laughs> to... That, that's Rangers having a purple patch of consistency. Those little moments where we could field roughly the same team all the time, which has clearly just not been the case this season. Um, so, yeah, I, I, again, I've, I've seen people just maybe rewrite history completely around Lundstrom and he's, he's, he's never done anything and that's it's just famously nonsense, um, but I think he he has his heart and his will. I think is just a bit misguided because he he ends up by definition, um, and by by consequence making us an utter shapeless mess, and that's the huge problem. Before you get into individual players' confidence, um, we we've lost that. Now if, again, if Sterling plays in midfield all the time. I go back to that. I'm not so sure he, he he does feel he has to do everything because he has an engine beside him. Someone who'll break things up and he'll spoil and will just give the ball quite neatly and 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 you know just do his job. And that's when Rangers look probably looked their best in big games. And now it's not particularly pretty. And again, you've got a lot of Rangers fans saying we don't need both of them in there. Well, maybe we do. Well, <laughs> um, because because this we are getting turned over so easily. Well, that's it. Horses for courses. I don't yeah. think when the team is playing well, you do need it, right? But yeah. Particularly at home, right? I think there is a difference with, with away games. And... But then, David, that's where Motherwell came from. We just no, I know that, two but, massive but, but, games. He said, right, I... I'll drop him, drop him. Rafkin, yeah, no, you've done nothing. And your you point earlier, a mess. Your point earlier was right about that he felt he should be able to, but mm-hmm. was proven that wasn't the case. But you're, you were right. But what I think that you need to do is look at where you are in the current situation. If the team is playing well and, and scoring goals, no, you don't need Sterling in there. But right now, when teams are breaking on you at will, you do. You need someone in there who can break that up, who can match runs, who has the, the engine to get about. So you have to go with it. And that is in the kind of short-term fixes thing for me. You know, we're coming up to the game on Wednesday yeah. night. that You do put Balogun in. You do put Sterling into the middle. The third one 
is the forward areas. Um, because one guy who doesn't lack for confidence is Cyril Dessels, but one thing he does lack for is consistency in his finishing. And we saw again yesterday the game could and certainly should have been over by half time in our favour, but he misses chances. To me, he falls into the Sakala category, Dave, of a guy who contributes, gets numbers, but you can't trust, and therefore not what we need. Yeah, do you know, um, it's a good comparison. I remember September, October time, and there, uh, Sakala was scoring in the Saudi League, and you had a lot of people on Twitter saying, I can't believe we sold this guy. And I was like, selling him was one of the better decisions that Bill had. It's just the fact they brought in Dross to replace him. That, that, that was the issue. Neither are, are good enough for, for Rangers. Neither of them are going to get us to where, to where we want to go. And... Yeah, I mean, you talk about horses for courses. This is just where we are. He's our only fit striker, the only one that we can re- re- rely to start on every week. Because I mean, I, I'm not even. I don't even consider Roof an option because you know he could start the guy and he could fall over in the tunnel and that's him out, out for another six months. He is what we're stuck with for now to the end of the season. So. I don't know. We just need to bear with it and hope for the best when it comes to that. Because I don't. I generally don't know what else we can do. Yeah, that's the thing, Martin, about these, these you know short term fixes. There are options in the other two positions where you go right. You can do this mm-hmm. up front. You don't really see it. You've got him, and you've got Silva, who seems to be now considered a left sided player. I don't think he's done much in the last two games that suggest he should be getting. And you could, I suppose, go Sima through the middle, um, put Matondo on the left, and I don't know McCausland on the right. I, you know, but as a manager, just thinking. Uh, yeah, but this is all I have. I'll need to go yeah. with him. He might miss chances, but we'll just need to make him enough to make sure that you know the ratio keeps up. Yes, he he, he does not have a lot to play with. Um, the, the I mean, the one issue I would I would have, I I actually wanted to see Silva and Dessel's play. See if Silva could get a wee bit tighter to him and and maybe move defenders around. Maybe give him a wee bit more space, better passes. I don't know. Um, but that 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 doesn't work, so we, we shouldn't be persisting with it. Silva was awful on the left against Hibs. I couldn't believe he started uh, against Celtic. Again, determined by the fitness. You're not going to start Seema last week because he was not fit enough to start, probably. Um, I think we'd all say that Matondo isn't a starter. He's, he's an impact player when the game's I kind of feel a, a, a bit that, ragged. Yeah. Um, and so, I think the manager does... Now, Seema probably, Bryce, you would hope, is close to, if not, ready to, you know, to get going. Um, he could also start yesterday, and we can maybe see that as a, uh, a kind of longer term thing. Don't know what's happened with McCausland, maybe not quite recovered from that injury, I think, in international duty. Um, but yeah, yeah it, it, it is not a great combination. Um and then there's the, the 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 ten thing, and you know, I I I do, or I I have liked Lawrence. Uh, wasn't he was awful against Celtic actually, and um, didn't really contribute under pressure the way he did at Rugby Park, uh, which I thought he was excellent that night. Um, Campbell tried, and he he, he was the only one, a man Seema, the only one that looked remotely confident. Um, but again, wasn't really coming off. Uh, it's just I go back again. I'm so sorry to be um, as maybe low as, as, uh, as some people will no doubt say, but they, they they just look like a team that's fading away from a level that they they had set, um, and that's incredibly frustrating and disappointing because I think we all bought into it to some extent at some point uh, that this this could actually happen, um, but it's probably realistic. They were always the, going to, they were always going yeah, to fade, fade away. Revert slightly. Yeah. On, on the, the buying in thing, Dave, I haven't chucked in the towel, but I suppose I've got a very slender grip on it, you know, <laughs> to, to, to use a, another metaphor. I don't think the fat lady's singing. But I think if we don't win, never mind, you know, draw. I think if we drop points at Dundee, then you might get our warming up those vocal cords. There's just no option now if you have any hope and over and above what 
people's individual take on whether or not we can get something at Parkhead to even be in a position where it's going to matter. Yeah. There's just simply no option, but Dundee Wednesday night, you have to win. And that's that's just got to be the attitude, whether you need to run through a brick wall on fire to do it, you have to do it. Yeah, you know, I was talking about earlier um, how I expected we might fall short and, you know, look at this game, that, that could have been... Uh, a potential banana, uh, banana peel coming up. I think it's going to be a really hard game, but we are where we are. I mean, that's the thing. Incredibly, we're still at this point in the season, and it's not done. We're not out of it, despite everything. We've, we've, and the tone we've spoken in the last forty minutes, there's still a chance that we can win this uh, title. Six games left, and it's just pff, any means necessary. I'd, I'd, I don't care how we do it now, because the, the six games are six games in isolation. We'll worry about the summer when it comes to it. We know massive change in the meeting. I don't. I don't care how we do it. Just win on Wednesday. Yeah, that's where I would again differ a wee bit. If we if we stumble over the line on Wednesday, regardless where it is, um, does that recharge everyone? A team that well, I, I'm going on. I'm going on the it, no, the it, thought it that doesn't... isn't anyway. We need to be able to have any it hint. No, it doesn't recharge the team, right? But uh, the, the the fans or whatever. But it, I just don't think you go from yesterday to being great like that. I just don't think it no. works like that. So you get no, I, the win. I, I, I would be I brilliant would if it was a nice about that. Straight, I'm just yeah, saying. It'd be nice that, if it was a straight two for, nil. Yeah, in victory. order for this team to go to Parkhead and win, which they're going to have to do, it can't just be a win here and and, and getting past Hearts even on. Um, on on Sunday, they do need to look like a very. They, they do need to look a lot like their old selves, and I I I agree with your um, uh, pessimism about how realistic that is. I'm just saying that that's that's what I needed to see yesterday personally. In fact, I'll, I'll wind it back. I needed to see it last week. We needed really to be going to Parkhead mm-hmm. Five Clear, in my opinion, and. Other opinions are available. Whatever you need to listen to, to in order to help you sleep at night, that's that's up to you. Um, I felt we we needed a buffer and we needed to beat them and therefore really charge back again. And um, you know, I was at one point yesterday when we were we were winning. I could see us getting another. We can see it, of course, but you know, we we're going to hold on and just go over. It's going to be a nervy finish, two one, and it wouldn't have changed much in my mind, really, because I needed to see something far more cohesive and far stronger, far more robust and resilient in order to to deal with that trip there when, whenever it is. And so I, I know it's counterintuitive and it goes against pretty much everything I talk about on, on these shows where results are the only thing that matter. But I hope I'm making sense. I need to see something bigger from from this Rangers team rather than just being able to beat Dundee. For, for yeah, me, even, even Sunday. What even Sunday, by is... the way. I know it's not the league, but yeah. even going to Hamden and, and really putting on a show, both mm-hmm. defensively and offensively. Uh, yeah, what you're saying you, is... You're then is asking to, for a miracle. To be, to be within a chance of winning at Parkhead, you need to be playing well. And yeah. even if you win the games, just believe in. Yeah, it's just believing. Yeah, it's just believing. I just think There's that, no that you, way that you start off that process... No, but you start off the process by... But, well, if, if that's the case, then it, it doesn't matter. Then they, they won't win. So it doesn't matter what the result... It doesn't matter if they don't believe they can win at Parkhead and they win the next match. But you, but you, you get belief from evidence. You get belief from... Well, then they, they right, had that, we, but... And, then, and it, and it went. Four points at the last 12. Yeah, it's gone. And it went. So... I, I don't get it. it, it you, you, however, I get your point. I just don't get you how ever, that, However you, you do it, you, 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 need, you need it to come back. And if there are two good shows, I'm not saying that's... I guarantee either, by the way, but if there are two good shows coming up and you have a sense of cohesion on the left, for example, Red Van returns, I, I don't know what, what the situation is, they're probably not, but you know what I mean. You start getting chemistry back and, right, okay, they do this and I can, I don't have to cover there, I can just concentrate on this and, um, and you know, whatever it may be. Um, actually, we're, we're not bad. Actually, this is how it felt six weeks ago. That's what you need to discover. I think that's a miracle for the manager to pull off personally. But that that's that's kind of that's kind of what you need. Um, but yeah, I, I, I can only I got a bit of a doing last week for saying I, I didn't think a point was enough. And fuck's sake, look at the table, look at the, the, the situation we're in, and you can always you can only comment on what you see. 
and it, it, it's without question a team that's just been slipping away and um, it's not to say that it can't be it's, it's impossible to be rebooted and it's absolutely not impossible for their old demons to return either by the way uh, if they get complacent which possibly is their only hope now that they, that they think it's done after yesterday um, but that that's kind of the equation you, you're, you're, you're looking for both teams to completely change the trend that they're currently on well, it has happened before in the season, and as Martin says, that's that's the hope. But uh, we need to see evidence of it starting this Wednesday night. And really, the only people who can provide that evidence, Dave, are the team. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's the way it is. Um, I'm glad you don't ask us for predictions this year because I, I I couldn't predict what's what's going to happen on Wednesday. Um, I'd I'd say if it's going to be a tough game, and it's all the onus is, is on us. Um, I mean, this is a, a Dundee side, I think, you know, a decent side to make the top six. I think they've still got an outside chance to get a European spot, but by and large, their mission has been accomplished this season. We're the ones still with something to fight for that we can see. So, yeah, it's up to them to, you know, prove to, to all of us that they are capable of performing another miracle. Well, They'll be very keen to spoil us. Of course. And given, more, given, just more given the talk and to worry about, you know, just the criticism and, 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 and the, the whole context around the game, don't I wouldn't think for a minute that your job done, lad. We, we're on the beach as, as some clubs and some leagues almost certainly are. Um, so <laughs> this team are great when they win behind them. They are. They have been. They've given us some incredible moments over the last three years in particular. Um, it's when the wind changes mm. that we've been found wanting more. The wind is changing and it has changed. And can we change it back? That's that's the big remaining question for, for the remainder of the season. And we're going to have to see some sense of character that we've probably not seen or not seen enough of from a few key individuals. Everything's possible in football, but that's, that's a big ask. Well, Phil and the squad, it's over to you. We'll, of course, be covering that match and everything else over on the Heart and Hand and Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash heart and hand. And Cammy will be back later in the week with, uh, hopefully, uh, a Heart and Hand extra that does cover a Dundee game, as we've promised you the last two weeks, and it hasn't quite, or last two of the last three weeks, and it hasn't quite penned out that way. My thanks to our producers in London, Mike Lee and Paul Miles, and my thanks to my two guests, first of all, David Marshall. Cheers, boys. Enjoyed that. Very upbeat. <laughs> and Martin Ramsey <laughs> I'd say it was a pleasure as I usually do but you, you know what I mean I know what you mean I think the listeners know what you mean as well right folks take care we'll talk to you again soon bye bye everyone <laughs>